Hi, my name is Janet Ossebaert. I've been a crop circle researcher for 23 years and today I'm going to show you how we know for sure that most crop circles are not man-made. For over 30 years, a lot of scientific research has been done by a variety of researchers across the world. Universities and laboratories carried out scientific analyses of samples from hundreds of crop circles. What I'm going to do in this video is show you a list of weird things that you can find in genuine crop circles. The official term for weird things is biophysical anomalies. Here we go. First, there are what we call germination anomalies or seedling anomalies. This means the seeds from within the crop circle germinate at a different speed than those from outside the crop circle elsewhere in the same field. In some cases, crop circle seeds germinate faster. In other cases, they are slower. Second anomaly, elongated nodes. Crop circle plants often have elongated nodes, and in many cases they are not just elongated but bent as well, sometimes up to 90 degrees. Now this is not the result of phototropism, where the plants grow back to the sun in a vertical movement. This is a horizontal bending. After all, the plants lie flat to the ground. Scientists cannot explain this. It simply should not occur in nature. And what about tree formations? This one was discovered by myself in my home country, the Netherlands. They have also been reported in other countries, such as Canada and the Czech Republic. Third anomaly, expulsion cavities. In mature crop, the plant nodes inside crop circles sometimes explode from the inside out. We call them expulsion cavities or blow nodes. The nodes are no longer flexible and cannot handle the intense energies with which the crop formations are made. Especially in maize or corn, the effect is quite spectacular. Fourth anomaly, vanished seeds. In some formations, the majority of the seeds have disappeared. Were they eaten by birds? Probably not. There are simply too many missing, or just on one side of the seed head, which is weird. Fifth anomaly, traces of heat found in quite a few crop circles, like for instance in this gorgeous formation of 2001. I found both burnt thistles sticking out of the downed wheat and dehydrated and rolled up grass, as if the formation was formed by something hot and swirling. Or this one in 2008. Some of the standing tufts were utterly scorched. And this one in 94, where hot molten meteoric dust had covered the white chalk stones in the formation. It then cooled down and solidified, leaving a brown layer all over the stones. Sixth anomaly, the dead flies. In 1998, I discovered hundreds of tiny dead flies on the standing tufts in a crop circle at Sherrill. I found none elsewhere in the field. And up till today, I keep finding dead flies in crop circles. A similar event took place in 2004, when my friend Annemieke Witteveen discovered dead slugs in a crop formation. Seventh anomaly, strange substances. In 97, a white spongy substance was found in a crop circle in the Netherlands. It was only the beginning of a whole series of events in my home country where we found large quantities of strange deposits inside crop circles. Chemical analyses show that none of these substances occur in nature. Who or what made it and left it there? Eighth anomaly, ghost formations. When the farmer harvests his crop and ploughs his field at the end of the season, no trace is left of the crop circle that was there. Then, the next season, he sows a new crop. Well, lo and behold, the crop circle of the previous season seems to reappear in the field. In this case, at Barbary Castle in Wiltshire, the plants were longer and stronger than the control plants elsewhere in the field. 
This is not simply a germination anomaly, like we've seen previously, as the seeds in this case belong to a whole different crop. They have nothing to do with the crop circle seeds. These growth anomalies are caused by an alteration in the crystalline structure of the surface soil. The intense energies that cause the crop circle to appear modify the soil and thus its fertility. According to geological research, this kind of crystalline alteration should not occur in surface soil anywhere on the planet. We simply do not know of any kind of energy able to accomplish this. And it gets even better when snow melts on the exact same spot that held a crop circle a few months prior. Ninth anomaly, magnetic field distortions. In various crop circles, our compass showed anomalies. North was no longer north. Tenth anomaly, time distortions. Two stopwatches showed two different outcomes. One was taken inside the crop circle, the other one stayed at the edge of the field. Eleventh anomaly, failing equipment. Some equipment does not go well with strong electromagnetic fields. Is this why cameras sometimes fail to focus or to get the lighting right? A bit to the left or right and everything was just fine, but move back and the same problem occurred. Phones too have proven to dysfunction in some crop circles. On top of all of this, there is the lay of the crop, the way the plants have been laid down. You don't have to be Einstein to understand that this is not the work of men with stumper boards. This lovely formation not only had an intricate centre swirl, it also had a thistle standing up straight, dead centre in one of the tiny circles. And what about this one? We called it the woven basket, for obvious reasons. And the sunflower of 2000 had three nests in its centre. What about the inner spiral of this beauty? The Hinton Parva formation of 2006 blew me away. It seemed simple from the air, right next to a burial mound, but take a look at the details in the two outer circles. Isn't this just breathtaking? And this one, a year later, seemed rather messy from the air, but look at the intricacy on the ground, from nests to swirls to knots, bouquets, bridges, ovals. One of the best ever appeared at Avebury Troslow in 2009. The inner circle had a massive amount of swirls, whereas the centre was something I'd never seen before and I've never seen since. The outer circles had the most amazing features. Then there was West Overton in that same year with the most breathtaking circles. The centre circle was like a woven basket. One of the outer circles seemed to be swirling, so many swirls. And the other outer circle consisted of seven rings and a double swirl in the centre. Some rings were radiating outwards, others were laid down in a swirling fashion. One of the smallest circles of this planetarium formation had a surprise. Have a look at this. Talking about surprises, the smoking alien had off-centred swirls, double swirls, and something like a bird's nest that even amazed my dog. And look at the swirls on his forehead. Then in 2012, finally, a crop circle in poppies. The delicate flowers had been laid down meticulously. Nothing was damaged. Not a footprint could be found. 2013, more swirls, nests, and intricate weaving. Just a simple circle? I think not. I could go on forever, but let's finish with this one. The edges seemed messy, but try doing this with boards at night. Small amounts of plants were laid down towards the centre path, 
in different directions. Now, for those who still cling to the idea of hoaxes with stumper boards, take a look at this. Snow formations. These circles formed in the Netherlands in 2009, and to tell you the truth, they blew me away. Even after all of the hundreds of crop circles that I've seen over the years, to behold this, all those circles in fresh snow and no footprint leading up to them was a sight I will never forget. And a final challenge for the stumperboard theory, a fully intact bird's nest. You've got to be one hell of a hoaxer to accomplish that in the middle of the night. Now, I know that there are still many people out there who think crop circles are made by man. But think about this. You only need one crop circle that's proven to be genuine, and then you have yourself a case, a phenomenon. Just one. According to science, only 6% of all the hundreds of crop circles that were scientifically studied were deemed suspicious. Six out of 100 had no biophysical anomalies, and were therefore quite likely man-made. Well, that means 94 out of 100 were not man-made. 94. We only needed one case, remember? After more than two decades of research, I've come to the conclusion that yes, some crop circles are indeed man-made. They might look nice from the air, some of them anyway, but they are a total mess on the ground with no anomalies whatsoever. They have no magic, like the real ones. They feel empty, hollow. The real phenomenon feels alive, full of joy and magic. It's vibrant, something science cannot comprehend nor publish about. But it's there all right. Just visit a crop circle and feel for yourself. How are crop circles formed? Who make them? Why do they appear in our fields? Join me next time for more answers.